how you think Islam will evolve in the next 50 years. I think the more time will come, the more, the more Muslims will become educated, the more Islam will die. See, most of countries who they are attached to Islam, most of them, they are uneducated. But in case you do not know, a lot of Muslims who come to the West, they leave Islam anyway. Like maybe like there is some, you know, like you know, people you know, they make videos, etc. They are coming, they are a migrant, but the majority of Muslims are leaving Islam. Like as an example, Iran. I believe Iran, as soon as the regime collapses, Iran will become a big number of it Christian. We do not know if the majority will become a Christian, but obviously Iran is not going to be in the future Muslims. If you go right now to Turkey, Erdogan is uh, gathering his group and his party, but he, in order to rule, he don't have the majority of Muslims. He have the majority with nationalist, uh, Ottomanist, all kind of like groups. Let us say they call them right wings. The one who want to have empire, the Ottoman empire. You know, he, asso he associates himself with many groups in order to be a majority. But he cannot be a majority by the Muslims only. If you go right now and check how Turkish people, how women they dress and what how they live, you will find that where is the Muslims? Night clubs, nakedness, the beach is naked. I mean, you name it. So the appearance those countries are Muslims. If you go to Egypt right now, Billy dancing is the normal dance there. Nakedness is the normal way. Drugs, hashish, go to Morocco. But in appearance, they are Muslims and they are conservative. But in reality, Islam is dead there already. Who is a Muslim there? Even Saudi Arabia now, you can eat in the street in Ramadan. Women, they walk without any hijab. Women, they can drive cars. Women, they are wearing jeans. Women, they are wearing short. Who can believe this, that Saudi Arabia will be like this? It's impossible. And if this is the center of Islam, it's like this. So what is left? And you know, this is why I say it's very important to have a terrorist or dictator as a leader in the Middle East. When I say a terrorist, it doesn't mean Hamas or, you know, ISIS. I mean someone like the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He's a terrorist. If you don't agree with him, he would die. So he said, we don't want uh, this uh, Sharia police no more. Ah, people pray, not pray. Who dare to open his mouth? All those religious sheikhs in Saudi Arabia, suddenly they are dead. Nobody dare to open his mouth. And if there is a few, they open their mouth, they are dead already. Dictator is the only one who can change the direction of a nation in the Middle East. He said women should don't, you know, none of the business if you, you know, women wear hijab or not. Yeah. Women in the street were in no hijab. And now they have uh, uh, theaters, uh, they have nightclubs, uh, they have a, a competition for music. Music before it was haram. Who dare even to play music? The first bicycle came to Saudi Arabia, a guy, he was abroad. He brought with him a bicycle. He took the bicycle on the street, he drove the bicycle, he came back home. Few hours after the police came to his house and they have an order from the Sharia court to execute the devil bike. They consider the bicycle the devil bike. This is how savage they were. So from people not long time ago executing the bicycle, a guy, he have a ducks. You know, he made a concrete containers for his flowers in his yard in the shape of a duck. Somebody came to his house and he reported him to the Sharia court. Suddenly inside his house, like there's five, six hundred people, the whole town is coming. Allahu Akbar. And the judge is coming and the guy wearing a mask and he have a sword in his hand. They knock at his door. What I did, what happened? They said, you have idols in your house. Me, I have idol where? I swear by Allah, I don't. He said, no, no, you have idols, open the door. They look, yeah, he have idols, he have ducks. 
and then they open the doors all the way, the two metal doors, like the two uh, side of it, and the crowd came inside, and then the sheikh, he, uh, he read the judgment of the Sharia court, and then the Sayyaf, the guy who hold the sword, he carried the sword, Allahu Akbar, and he broke the neck of the idol, which is a dark container, plant container. And the crowd chanting, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. This is how savage they are. Now this is Jeddah. <laughs> this is the this is the Middle East. This is this is Saudi Arabia. This is what? This is Saudi Arabia. Now. What happened? So it doesn't matter how much they claim about Islam, and you know, you will notice that those who they are living in the West is too much Muslims, more than the Muslims in the Islamic countries. Mostly I notice actually, those who they are more attached to Islam is those who live in, the, in, in Asia. Like, you know, you will see in Indonesia, a girl, she is uh, five years old, she's wearing hijab. In the Middle East, nobody do that, you know. Nobody care for Islam. Islam is dead, really dead. And actually, after all what happened in the last few years, those who, in those countries did notice that they got nothing except garbage from this cult religion. Like, look at Syria now. Destroyed. Look at Iraq. Look at Libya. Name one place a group who they are, Islamist, brought something good to it. Yemen will never be Yemen again because the Islamist is involved. Shia versus Sunni, they will keep killing each other forever. Same as Syria, same as Iraq, same, you know, and they, people will reach the point where they understand that as long as our problem is a religion, we will never have peace. And then they will give up this garbage. The second issue is education. As long as people are uneducated, then people, they, you know, this Islam garbage will stay. You will notice that Hamas is flourishing in Gaza. Why? Because in Gaza, there are very little number of educated people. Women just make babies, you know. The new generations, maybe 30, 40 years from now, if they are better educated, they will not be the same. Education subdued Islam, changed Islam. Like you see this uh, uh, Mimi Hijab, he talk about Gaza, he support Gaza, but he, because now he live in the West and he became more educated, he don't join Jihad, he don't want to kill anybody, he don't kill anybody. But yet he claim he is very conservative, but you know that a conservative Muslim is somebody join Jihad. And he kill for real. Not somebody go and make his speeches on YouTube. Syria should belong to Israel. Well, you know, based on the biblical, uh, the promise to uh, in the Old Testament that it is from the river to the sea. But if God can make such a promise, well, that's good. But for now, Syria is not for Israel. I mean, the Israeli have a hard time to take over Gaza. They have a hard time to take their own temple. It's in, the, in their hand, and they are, you don't have a leader. You don't have, you know, you're, the leaders in, in Israel, they are potatoes. The temple is in the front of them. It's across their eyes. They can touch the wall, but they cannot go inside it. And you are talking about Syria. Go take the temple first. They don't have a real leadership. They are just doing partition. And all what they care is to avoid conflict, but the conflict will come. They avoid it, they think it's not coming, but they never solve it. Take the temple, build it. Actually, this is the time they should, right away, the first thing they should do, 
after the attack in Gaza because when Hamas attack, what the name the attack? The flood of Al-Aqsa. Shouldn't you respond B by taking Al-Aqsa? To show them that next time you do such a thing, the response will be massive. If you have a real leader in Israel, the response should be take the Aqsa, not take Gaza. The first thing you do, you take Al Aqsa. You attack us because of Al Aqsa, here we go. You are out. And who can stop them? The same, nobody can stop you to go to Gaza, nobody can stop you to take the temple. So why you don't take it? Can they stop them? All those who protest, still let everybody protest, who care? Actually, they have full control of the temple. Yet they allow the Muslim to do to take to take the top floor of it. Just tell them no more, that's it. Take it. Even in their book, it is your temple. 